Alright everybody, um, you're actually seeing a re-recording of this, so this was actually re-recorded, so, you know, let's get that out of the way right now. Originally recorded Sunday night for week number, what, four? And, uh, like, I gotta do something about it, something's wrong here, so, had to redo this, so, just wanted to get that out of the way before we get started here. Week four of the college football season begins on a mere eerie September Saturday, the last Saturday in September. It seems a little light on the slate, but it's okay. The plate is full. The plate is full of interesting matchups. We're going to start eating. Let's start eating these matchups up because there's going to be plenty more where that comes from. Bring out the buffet. Bring it out. And let, let's just not have any more ref ball like in Memphis, Mississippi State and Oklahoma State, Boise State. I'll talk about Oklahoma State again in a minute. But man, ref ball, I, I, forgot, about, I forgot about this on Sunday morning, Saturday, late Saturday night. Talk about that. But my God, ref ball has been atrocious at times this year. Just really, really atrocious in these two games right here. And, and you know, speaking of things that... Are, you know, are atrocious, you know, I'm, I'm just going to be wondering, you know, oh, can, can the refs, you know, get out of their own way? Can they, can they not be ostriches? Get their heads out of the dirt. Stop being terrible. But, you know, you know, again, I explained a couple of these on, from Saturday. But, I mean, you know, the phantom targeting call in, in the Cincinnati-Indiana game, that didn't make any sense. And, I mean, yeah, that, that was one of those that just did not make any sense at all. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Things are fine now. Things are fine. And everything's going to be all right. You know? Hopefully no games get ruined by ref ball this week. I'm, I'm really hoping that. But, um, yeah. Let's, let's get into it. Notre Dame, Wisconsin. That is the premier game. In this, you know, early time slot on Saturday, of course, you know, this matchup's all throughout the week, Thursday night, Friday night as well, but let's, you know, let's, let's get to the real good stuff, which is Saturday, you know, and Notre Dame, Wisconsin kicks us off in Chicago with Wisconsin's defense still being pretty good. Remember, they, they were keeping Penn State in check for most of that game. Very interesting defense there, but the real question for Wisconsin is Graham Mertz. He's not looked... He's not looked particularly well. He's looked all right. Nothing really spectacular or anything like that for the Badgers. And, you know, it's a homecoming for Jack Cohn. Remember, he was at Wisconsin. Will he play well? Because there's been times where he's been inconsistent with the ball, you know. But luckily, he has Kyron Williams to back him up. He's, he's continuing. You know, Williams has continued to play some damn good football, including putting away Purdue with a big run last week. You know... This guy's been, you know, really running all over teams so far this year, you know, and I mean, come on, Notre Dame, you know, they're still struggling, but um, if they beat Wisconsin today, or rather not today, on Saturday, you know, they beat Wisconsin on Saturday, they're going to be looking real good because the next few weeks, Notre Dame is going to be taking on ranked opponents, you know, unfortunately, Virginia Tech couldn't do their job and win against West Virginia, but we'll talk about West Virginia in a moment. But Notre Dame has more tough tests coming, and, you know, including, you know, Stanford and USC coming up. You know, both those teams are trying to reinvigorate themselves, and Cincinnati is coming up the week after this. So, I mean, Notre Dame's just going to have, you know, lots of intriguing matchups down the line, and they just have to play a lot better. They want to go to the college football playoff again. You know, I've been saying it for weeks. If they want to go to the college football playoff, they want to prove themselves, they got to play better. they got to play way better what they've been playing. So, we'll see. We'll see what they do. If they lose against Wisconsin, it, it's going to put a big, big damper in their playoff hopes. So, what about my Longhorns? Oh, yes. Um, unfortunately, there really isn't any other game to talk about in this time slot, except, except for Villanova Head State. That's right. Villanova... Penn State because Villanova is unbeaten. Penn State also unbeaten. Um, sure, it's an FCS matchup, but hey, you know, Penn State, 
they've got to take care of business real quick because their offense is still a little kind of eh at times. And uh, you know, we've had we've seen ten FCS over FBS upsets this year, and it, uh, I'm not even gonna lie to you, it could be number eleven. You know, Penn State just has to really just take care of business there. But there, and most ninety five percent of people expect. Penn State to take care of business with that. Speaking of taking care of business, the A Sun has taken care of business as well. They've gotten their sixth member. Congrats, Austin B. Congrats. Welcome to the A Sun. Really proud of you. We, most of us predicted, you know, a lot of college football insiders and then forum members predicted that Austin P would go to the A Sun anyway. So, good congrats to the governors. They have, they've had an interesting journey. You know, 2017, Will Healy, you know, he's now at Charlotte, but he, he took this team that was in the dirt. They were they were dead to rights. Took them all the way back, you know, got them close enough to a playoff bid in like 2017 or 2018. I think they actually made the playoffs either a year or two after, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong on that. But Austin P has seen a revitalization of their football program in the past few years, and congrats to them. They are going to do, you know, I think they'll do fine in the A-Sun. The A-Sun looks like a very strong FCS conference now with the teams that they've added. And speaking of the FCS, there will be more matchups talked about on this channel. That's right, we're going to talk about one. In fact, I will be talking about one next Saturday. It's for, for, rather for the Saturday after this one. So the first Saturday in October, I will be talking about an FCS matchup some of you may know what that matchup is. It'll be a top 10 matchup, hopefully. Uh, but again, that, that will be down the line. And, of course, there'll be some other ones, you know, hopefully on the channel in the future that I get to talk about because, I mean, we got to talk more about the FCS. We got to, you know, and you can't say spring ball for the FCS. You can't say that. Stop saying that. It's not going to happen. You know it's not going to happen because football fans do not not want spring football. I mean, how many times have we seen spring football over the last 20 years and it's failed? Too many times. Let's stop that. So, keep FCS in the fall. I've said my piece on that several times. Um, but anyway, Texas Tech, Texas, um, yeah, Texas Tech is undefeated. I don't know why they're undefeated, but because, I mean, I, I guess they played against the inferior competition. I've looked at Tech's schedule, they played against inferior opponents. And you know the you know the AP and coaches poll are itching to get the Longhorns back in the rankings. You know, defense played very solid for the Longhorns against Rice. You know why did we play Rice? Why did we play Rice? I don't know because we dismantled Rice. But Arkansas did not dismantle Rice. In fact, Arkansas played Rice pretty closely. It, on the other hand, we got smacked around by Arkansas. Well, so what does this say about Texas? What does this say about Arkansas? I don't know what it says about either of these two teams. You know? And, you know, I'm really thinking, you know, my main concerns for the Longhorns still are the O-line and mostly the defense. You know, uh, I mean, come on. It's the Big 12. Texas Tech's pass attack is always scary. You know, that air raid system has been at attack forever so always scary passing attack you know for that but there's really there was really no other matchups to really talk about in the noon time slot to really say anything about so I have to, I had to choose something you know, for you know I had to choose somebody it happened to be my Longhorns because we get an ABC game which is always fun um all right so let's move on to these um 230 matchups here Texas A&M Arkansas arguably the biggest game of the day KJ Jefferson he's been playing lights out this year man playing lights out to play lights out against Georgia Southern obviously we know of this of the beating that Arkansas gave Texas and you know Zach Galzada you know he's looking to continue to improve you know, I'm still concerned with A&M's offense though you know again just I mean just because you know A&M beat up on New Mexico does not mean anything. Same thing with my Longhorns beating Rice. It really doesn't mean anything unless it counts. And conference play counts. So, you know, again, AM's offense has to get a little bit better if they want to beat Arkansas and they want to, you know, they may be looking ahead to Bama too, but, you know, again, Arkansas is not that type of team to really just be playing around with because, I mean, 
you, you saw how they dismantled Texas. You really saw that. And somebody's going to have to step up for, for the Aggies. Somebody's going to have to step up. I don't know who it's going to be. But maybe it's maybe it's Calzada. Maybe it's somebody else. But again, somebody has to do something. Jimbo has to get these guys in the game and get and get them prepared very well for a for an Arkansas team that is hungry to get back to where they were. Remember this. this I mean, this Arkansas team has not been good in a decade. You know, so. Could it be? Could it be? We see a top ten Arkansas soon, or will A and M put that music down? You know, put the Arkansas, you know, Razorback top ten projections to the dirt. Put put them to rest. Is what I mean. Um, and speaking of teams that are should be put to rest, Iowa State and Clemson, they're gonna have to play a lot better. You know, if they don't want to be put in the dirt. And their CFP hopes are dashed. They don't want that. They don't want those hopes to be dashed. They have to play better against Baylor, Iowa State, for um, respectively. Iowa State taking on Baylor and Clemson taking on NC State. Both Baylor and NC State are a couple teams that seem to be very interesting on paper. And you know, again, Clemson has looked horrid on offense. Iowa State has looked horrid on offense. So both. Both Iowa State and Clemson have to play a lot better than what they've had to do. And, you know, again, you know, their their playoff lives are on the line here. Both these teams, in all honesty, they cannot slip up anymore. You know, they can't. Um, but the other real the other big game I'm gonna be watching at the um the 3.30, 2.30 time slot is Rutgers Michigan. Yes. Undefeated Rutgers, undefeated Michigan, and and I mean Greg Schiano has he's got to get this Rutgers defense disciplined, ready to face a Michigan run game that has been going crazy. Remember, 370 plus rushing yards last week for the Wolverines, and again the same question applies to Michigan's defense. Will they continue to improve as we get into Big Ten play? I mean. They were, they, I mean, a couple weeks ago, they looked very, very fierce against Washington, but this is Big Ten play now. Can they keep that intensity up? I'm wondering. So, we'll see, we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do, and then I'm excited to see Rutgers for the first time this year. Um, did not expect to see Rutgers 3-0 for the first time, but hey, it's going to be interesting, you know. Don't let those lines fool you. Last time I saw, you know, a betting line said Michigan by 18. Don't let those lines fool you. Do not let, do not, don't bet. In all honesty, don't bet. It's stupid. You're wasting your money. <laughs> um, but yeah, late into the night, the prime time, 7, 7 o'clock, 6.30, 6 o'clock type games, you know, those types of matchups involve both Oklahoma schools. These are the two ones that I'm paying attention to. Kansas State, Oklahoma State. Why is this game stuck on ESPN Plus? I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. And you know the Cowboys, they're struggling. They're, they're really struggling. They need Spencer Sanders and Mike Gundy to, you know, get something scheming. You know, get some scheming going on because I mean Oklahoma State's offenses look terrible. Beyond terrible. Their defense looks alright, but Offense beyond terrible. They need to get together. And especially against a Kansas State team that can run the ball with Deuce Vaughn. And I mean, that guy can run the ball. You all know it. We all know it. You remember last year against Oklahoma? Yeah, he can run. And I think Kansas State will go heavy with the run, in all honesty. That's what I'm thinking. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Kansas State play yet, but... You know, uh, I'm thinking they could go all in with the run because I know they have a, um, Will Howard at quarterback. But honestly, it's Will Howard at quarterback. <laughs> I mean, he he really doesn't really doesn't move the needle for me. I mean, a lot of a lot of Kansas State quarterbacks don't move the needle for me. But um, yeah, so but uh, this is gonna be an interesting matchup despite the fact that it's stuck on ESPN Plus and late. The primetime ABC game is West Virginia, Oklahoma, and the Oklahoma offense has looked awful. 
past few weeks. Looked very, very awful. We're talking this offense did not look good against Nebraska. We're talking this offense looked bad at times against Tulane. You know, you can, you can shout about that Western Carolina win all you want to, but this offense needs to get their pep back. They need to get some pep in their step with Spencer Rattler. I mean, again, this guy was supposed to be a, a lot of people, like 90% of people said, hey, this guy might win the Heisman. And he has not looked like a Heisman contender. He's not looked like the Heisman favorite, you know, at all. And I'm wondering, will West Virginia sputter like they have on offense and defense? Because they've sputtered on offense to where, you know, things did not go well against Virginia Tech and Maryland. Like they like they had it like they had things things were going fine at first and the defense failed to do anything as well for the for the uh, Mountaineers. You know, because I mean remember, Virginia Tech was down twenty seven to seven and they almost came all the way back to beat West Virginia. So, you know, Jared Nagy, he's still at quarterback. I don't know why. Because I mean, I get. I mean, obviously COVID, but I mean, he looks all right. So I'm wondering how he will play as well. You know, again, West Virginia, same thing with them. Like with Texas Tech, they've been running that air raidish type system forever. I think I'm not sure what Neil Brown does on offense, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, but West Virginia needs to get it together. We need to get it together real soon if they want to beat Oklahoma, a struggling Oklahoma has not looked like the number three team in the country. And last but not least, BYU and Oregon need to avoid upsets against inferior opponents. BYU's playing South Florida, South Florida team that played Florida kind of well, but not particularly well. You know, they, they, they still got blown out. South Florida did by Florida. And Oregon's playing Arizona, an Arizona team that has lost 15 straight games. Cannot let, you cannot let this Pac-12 after dark foolishness hit your Oregon. If you do, it may spell the end for your playoff hopes. It really might spell the end for Oregon if if it just so happens that you know that Oregon loses to Arizona. But a lot of people are saying, nah, that's not going to happen. But again, Pac-12 after dark is crazy. And this might be the last time I look at Pac-12 after dark for this year. So you know. Getting crazy. Yeah, if Oregon does indeed lose, again, these videos will come out earlier into the night, probably like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So we'll see if Oregon can keep it up. And BYU also needs to keep it up, obviously. You know, their schedule isn't really particularly hard after, you know, beating up three straight Pac 12 opponents. You know, still have USC down the road, they still have Virginia down the road. But BYU looking pretty. And, you know, I'm gonna be watching. It seems like I'm gonna be watching a lot of BYU games this year. Really fun team, but again, you know, gotta gotta avoid an upset. Oregon too. You know, hopefully we can keep seeing this team. You know, hopefully I get to keep talking about this team. This team is fun. C.J. Burdell, fun player to watch. You know, uh, definitely a Heisman favorite now with with his performances. So again, we're gonna we're gonna have to keep watch and see what they're gonna do. What these two teams are gonna do. Um, late Saturday night, very late. We're talking like 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific, I mean, not Pacific Central Time. Let's see what they're going to do. All right, that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. I will see you all um, again soon for more football content on this channel and more content in general. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming to the channel soon. So, you know, stick around. Congrats to all the new subs. You you are welcome, and you are welcome to comment, like, share, comment, subscribe. I think I said comment twice, but whatever. Um, click the notification bell. Engage with others in the comment section and stuff like that. And let's just have a good time here. You know, let's keep the channel growing. All right, y'all take care. Have a good week.